My name is Eileen Oberst and I'm the official chair of the session, so I'm not going to talk, but I think we have three exciting presentations from um, three researchers. And let me just briefly introduce you the three of them and their topics and um, just talk really short about the um, procedure because um, every one of them is going to present for about 20 minutes and then you have the opportunity to ask or discuss for about like five to 10 minutes. Okay, so the first talk is going to be um, by Yolanda Penza, and the uh, sorry, the power. The title is um, "The Power of Wikipedia: Legitimacy and Territorial Control." Um, we will then have uh, the pleasure to hear Simeona Petkova, and she actually presents a paper from uh, Richard Rogers, and the title is "Wikipedia as Object of Study: How to How Do We Study Wikipedia?" And the third one is given by um, Thomas Petzold, and his title is um, Geolinguistic, sorry, Geolinguistic Bursts, The Hidden Pattern Behind Wikipedia's Globally Distributed Yet Locally speci Specific Knowledge Distribution. I'm really looking forward to the talks and of course to your questions and um, constructive um, comments. And yeah, so let's just start. Um, hello. Uh, the aim of my presentation is to highlight some of the geopolitical fallouts of uh, Wikipedia. And um, I will start with uh, uh, talking a little bit about the context of this presentation. Um, one of the major questions related to uh, uh, post-colonial studies is how to rewrite history. Uh, so there have been a lot of uh, studies related to the invention of Africa, uh, the invention of, uh, 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 the invention of also um, uh, well, uh, um, Orientalism and uh, the Eurocentric perspective is one of the main focus of uh, many colonial uh, history uh, writers and intellectuals. Um, at the same time, uh, another discourse that is growing is also related to territorial studies, linked to how we can bridge borders and how we can create and collect uh, uh, universal knowledge or how we, we can construct a knowledge that represents uh, in a more equal way uh, sources and knowledge coming from all over the world. Um, there have been a lot of, uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, studies uh, related to connection within anthropological uh, approaches, but also uh, related to how the global city is changing. So uh, when you look at a place, uh, that place is not only in that place, but is also somewhere else. Uh, uh, if you look at uh, all the outsourcing and uh, how the global city are obviously uh, moving on. Um, also, it's interesting to uh, refer also to obviously peer production that somehow uh, is also uh, looking at how people can collaboratively work. And I think those two uh, uh, studying directions can somehow uh, uh, meet uh, in this uh, uh, way of uh, producing a new knowledge. Um, in general, my research uh, question is uh, how to rewrite history. So which tool we can use to create this uh, collaborative, uh, international, interdisciplinary knowledge that can acknowledge also the uh, input uh, and also the points of view of uh, all humankind, let's say. Um, I have, uh, I've been working on cultural institutions for the last 14, uh, 14 years, uh, mainly in field research in Africa, in particular in Senegal, Cameroon, and South Africa, and also um, I am an art historian as a training, and uh, uh, I have a PhD in anthropology and in urban planning. Um, so um, my interest in uh, Wikipedia, it was really uh, try to test in which way we can build uh, this collaborative knowledge. Um, also, I'm uh, the scientific director of a project called uh, Wiki Africa, which aims at uh, Africanizing Wikipedia, uh, whatever this means. And um, uh, I'm also involved uh, uh, in working with uh, GLAMS, so cultural institutions, uh, because, of course, uh, to produce a milestone, we are currently producing 30,000 contribution, African contribution to Wikipedia. We're involving archives, uh, museums, and cultural institutions. Uh, so this is a little bit the portrait of what we've been uh, doing and that we are currently doing by involving a uh, cultural institution and working also presenting uh, uh, Wikipedia uh, in some country, trying to link uh, also our work uh, to what is going on. And um, obviously, Wikipedia uh, is a... Uh, 
is uh, uh, quite well acknowledged as an extremely powerful tool. Uh, so it's not necessary to repeat the, three, uh, the three 365 million readers, uh, the over 280 uh, uh, linguistic versions. But um, uh, what it came out with uh, the research is actually uh, noticing some, fall, uh, some uh, geopolitical fallout uh, of Wikipedia. So what happened while uh, doing this work since 2006 of working on Wikipedia with African contents and also involving institutions not only in Africa but everywhere in the world is uh, noticing that uh, there are other issues that are coming up, uh, not only related to the fact that Wikipedia has very little content uh, related to Africa. So this is uh, uh, absolutely a... Uh, a very clear situation. But uh, on the other side, we found uh, very difficult uh, the negotiation and also uh, we, we, got, we met uh, a lot of uh, uh, different national approaches. Um, I'd like to um, so highlight uh, one of the preliminary funding of uh, my research that is uh, related to, uh, to power dynamics. Uh, what is happening uh, on uh, Wikipedia is that Wikipedia is following a nation building approach. So if we compare uh, what is happening offline uh, with Wikipedia to uh, post-colonial nations, but also to the approach of uh, uh, colonial nations, uh, we can find very similar situation. Um, uh, our first one is uh, languages. I'm using uh, artworks to describe what I'm talking about because a lot of uh, uh, artists have been focusing on those issues for many years. So I think they can give uh, also a frame uh, related to the topics. And uh, mm, languages uh, is uh, one of the... Uh, sorry, I'm there. Languages is one of the issues that uh, Wikipedians are very concerned with and very interested in. In particular, when uh, talking about Africa, one of the priorities that uh, regularly comes out is uh, we need to increase uh, the uh, African languages. But uh, of course, um, languages has also a very strong political value and an identitarian value. If we look at uh, the Catalan version of Wikipedia, we can also uh, trace uh, some of those uh, dynamics. But we, if we look at those uh, phenomena in Africa, uh, talking about languages that are not uh, languages used uh, in the educational system, this uh, produces a, a very different impact. For example, the case of uh, Wolof. Uh, uh, Wolof encyclopedia in uh, is Wolof is one of the mainly used uh, languages in Senegal. It is not a language used in education. So somehow, if you promote uh, Wolof uh, in Senegal, is a very sophisticated intellectual uh, project. It's something that uh, Boris Boubacar Diop, who is one of the main scholars that uh, produces a lot of uh, books in Wolof and wo was one of the starter, uh, kind of pointed out also uh, very clearly also in uh, his uh, political use of the language. So the fact that Wikipedia uh, promotes languages obviously have uh, consequences and also uh, a meaning that is different from maybe what is uh, expected uh, to, uh, to, to be used. A second uh, element that is typical of national, nation buildings is uh, um, the construction of a cultural heritage. Monuments uh, represent uh, in the history of a country, and if we s look at the history of uh, public art, monuments, and also cultural heritage, all the policies uh, related to it, after World War II, we see how it was really a landmark to identify a culture and also to exclude other culture. Uh, there is a very interesting uh, essay of uh, uh, François Materasso on the issue of uh, cultural heritage also as a political tool and also as a way to not include a lot of the population because of course uh, uh, to who belongs the cultural heritage that you see. Uh, so uh, Wikilove's monument, uh, I'm not uh, talking about the beauty of this project and the capacity of this project of course to produce uh, incredible interesting results and uh, outreach and involvement of the community but on the other side what it's doing is also uh, constructing uh, what is the national uh, knowledge of what is a uh, knowledge on Wikipedia. <coughs> Another aspect is education. Uh, Wikipedia is uh, our contemporary textbook. Uh, the use of Wikipedia is extremely, obviously, uh, extremely large. But um, uh, distributing uh, offline versions of Wikipedia throughout the world, and this is something that has been tested uh, several times, kind of completely changes the meaning of uh, Wikipedia, first of all, because uh, it becomes an encyclopedia, not the encyclopedia that anyone can edit, because at the moment uh, the offline version of Wikipedia does not allow it. Um, edits uh, that are desynchronized um, kind of completely uh, reinvert uh, the role. And uh, if you think about uh, the role of education within a state uh, building procedure, education is always the tool uh, government uses also to create uh, a population, a citizenship uh, that is aware of its own history. So obviously the impact of Wikipedia doing this, uh, having this role uh, uh, on the globe has uh, also different consequences. 
Um, another aspect is uh, the territory, the link uh, with the territory. So at the moment the chapters are structured on a national basis. So you have uh, uh, chapters that are uh, linked to a, a particular country. Um, obviously also uh, this creates, a, generates a, a border around uh, every chapters and uh, it has implication in the way uh, the chapter uh, prioritize uh, also their work and uh, their activities. Um, I think a, a very specific example and uh, that is completely changing the frame of uh, what is happening is the collaboration with GLAMS. GLAMS are the cultural institution. There have been a, a, a growing uh, number of uh, relationships and uh, very positive links with GLAMS. But a uh, cultural institution always, always or uh, in the majority of cases required uh, an agreement or uh, they, they look for an interface. They look for somebody that is legitimate to speak on behalf of Wikipedia. So there is a, also there an issue related to who can represent Wikipedia and very often chapter kind of represent Wikipedia. On the other side, uh, also the priority of chapters are related to their nation. So it's very, um, for a chapter it's very important, of course, uh, uh, this project is becoming a priority for several chapters. And it's interesting because uh, it positions the chapter with uh, an activity, but on the other side, the priority is often given to very big uh, uh, public institutions, because of course they are more visible and they are the first priority. And also there is an interest in national history, so you tend to upload content related to your nation, rather than the diversity that is represented in your nation. <coughs> To conclude, I'd like to make uh, an example. Um, it's very difficult to, uh, well, at least what I noticed that many people have difficulties in finding a relationship between Poland, let's say, and Africa. Uh, this is something that is uh, what happened uh, in, uh, uh, during our research and what uh, I observed um, within those uh, six years. Uh, even though Poland is probably one of the countries with uh, two of the major protagonists of the uh, uh, last 50 years uh, uh, relationship with Africa, Kapuscinski, which is a major uh, writer, but also the Pope, uh, that basically invented the image and the relationship with Biafra and also the imagery that we associate very often to Africa. Um, the aim also to uh, kind of highlight uh, some of the uh, possibilities and also something that is happening on Wikipedia is also in a very obviously very short format but it's also to, uh, to try to see which are the direction in which Wikipedia can also go offline. Uh, at the moment there are no guidelines, uh, there is a mission, there is a vision, there is Wikipedia, and I'm talking about Wikipedia because uh, it is the power of uh, all the other projects. So um, even if uh, there are of course uh, other, um, other projects uh, developed uh, 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 within the Wikimedia Foundation, within the Wikimedia movement, Wikipedia represents the legitimacy and the strength of, this, of uh, the communication. Um, in, a recent, uh, in, in, in the last years, we saw also, uh, Wikipedia talking to the government in uh, Great Britain. Uh, we saw blackouts, so Wikipedia negotiating with governments in a way in which uh, they basically speaking as a nation, so having the possibility of negotiating with a nation uh, uh, also uh, an attention for free culture. I'm not questioning the direction in which uh, Wikipedia is going, the movement in itself, but I think it would be necessary to uh, develop also guidelines and also um, a way in which uh, uh, offline procedures are managed. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. German Wikipedia, not a Wikipedia in German language. And I was also in the jury of um, Wikidata Monuments for Germany, 
and it was a very similar situation and we had lots and lots of um, monuments from um, the German history, um, which was basically um, rewriting his um, German national history back again. I think you know what I mean when, when you, when you um, predate it. And um, I think it is, um, uh, from my point of view, it's, it's a very hard um, battle in Wikipedia. And there's some editors who actually um, try to change things on, on a very low level, on the level of day-to-day um, -day, um, edits and discussions. And um, there's not um, a lot of awareness in the community itself. And those who are aware of it um, are somehow very, um, they struggle um, about how to deal with it. They um, don't have um, some kind of idea how to address this issue. And I don't think there's lots of awareness on, on a higher level um, with regards um, to Wikimedia on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, the administration and the users who are um, some kind of um, yeah, established within the community. I'm going to completely share. Uh, if, uh, uh, well, um, there is also a, a direction in which uh, Wikimedia chapters are going is also related to uh, uh, development, so uh, cooperation and development project. I, uh, my impression when I was uh, uh, working on, uh, on it was really uh, also um, uh, everything that have been uh, studied and documented uh, within the post-colonial studies. Uh, so uh, all these issues uh, related to nation buildings or uh, how you can uh, deal with international relationships uh, have been explored uh, uh, quite uh, widely. So it's not, uh, um, I think what is uh, interesting at this point is also how can be um, uh, use the documentation also related to those issues. So how you can uh, um, not necessarily reinvent things, but at least uh, uh, consider also the uh, political uh, aspect of them. We, just a few, uh, few weeks ago, uh, Wikimedia France uh, launched uh, um, a project uh, that is involving uh, uh, Western uh, um, Africa. So it's a project that is uh, developed mainly in francophone country. So obviously the participation of uh, uh, users will change. But also the project is uh, linked to the Agence de la Francophonie, which is the major francophone uh, agency, so very, uh, which was created after World War, and uh, also to the uh, Institut Français. So it's uh, also in interesting how Wikipedia if it's uh, developed within uh, this political frame, it's uh, very easy, easily associated to uh, uh, a colonial uh, legacy because it's very strongly related. So I think that adds on. Um, I'm not saying also the project we are working on, Wiki Africa, uh, it's part of this discussion. So we face, uh, uh, we are not, uh, um, we are part of the problem, <laughs> let's say. So it's also difficult how uh, you can uh, um, also rebalance uh, dynamics. So that's Um, well, thanks for your talk. Um, this is a question for you as uh, one of the experts in the room on Africa, African Wikipedia. So it's a very simple question. And um, it's basically, much? what can Wikipedia chapters that were running first, so the large, large chapters, learn from African chapters and the African Learn. Experience? Yes, learn. Yeah. The African chapters are actually quite uh, young. Uh, also, it's uh, is very... Uh, um, uh, most of the chapters, the uh, uh, oldest uh, chapters is South Africa that it was uh, established uh, a couple of years ago but it was uh, inactive uh, for uh, several months and now uh, Wikimedia Kenya in, uh, um, in, uh, West, in Eastern Africa. So uh, the experience that they have obviously is not uh, very long. Um, but uh, uh, this is a very uh, unusual technique. Uh, Wikimedia chapters are always a brand new organization while for example Creative Commons can also affiliate so to existing one and there is also a discussion related also to existing uh, uh, including maybe within the network also existing institution. I think uh, for Africa also um, 
uh, since it's almost an empty continent, if you look at the map of uh, Wikimedia chapters, uh, it's really uh, absolutely not uh, uh, represented. Um, it's also interesting to look at other organizations that are working uh, there. So there are many organizations that can actually have a lot of experience. So building new organizations can also um, make it quite difficult, also because uh, um, very often, um, uh, not necessarily the, organ the volunteers that are working on Wikipedia or on issues of, uh, um, of uh, technology or open source or free, uh, free culture, free knowledge, are uh, very aware of uh, uh, other institutions and how they work. So somehow, not necessarily they associate it to uh, a, a network of uh, other, uh, other people working in uh, similar fields. So I think there is a lot to work, uh, but maybe not necessarily with uh, Wikimedia chapters uh, at the moment, at least. So you, so you would say the main difference would be that um, organi organizations and institutions are more involved. And there are volunteers um, as well, but you would say there are organizations more involved in it? I think uh, there, are, uh, all, there are very few chapters in Africa, right. and there are many organizations that are not necessarily working on Wikipedia, see. But, they can, uh, see. but they can contribute to the discussion. Um, I think you make this incredibly important point um, about how national narratives and national organization can actually stifle diversity because they follow a certain tradition um, of building knowledge bases, etc. And we usually, when we talk about Wikipedia, we talk about the whole of it and <coughs> diversity is the, the number. meta level of the discussion and say what is it that national chapters can do um, to actually not fall in, in this I think also some of the guidelines of uh, Wikipedia are kind uh, are pretty uh, uh, significant also for let's say offline work uh, collaboration should be at least uh, there's a uh, uh, an attention to uh, bringing the community within uh, the process it can be a relevant point uh, which is not necessarily done uh, also links with other institutions or links uh, with a, a more open uh, um, organization that would uh, probably uh, facilitate uh, those in particular networks because of course uh, um, uh, in the way structured uh, Wikimedia is, is obviously an association normally linked to an interest for Wikipedia. Um, but uh, creating uh, links with other institutions can be quite uh, um, productive. And uh, also uh, the possibility of affiliates uh, to regions, which once again is a model of uh, Creative Commons, a very banal model, but the fact that uh, uh, a country can decide in which region they want to, uh, with which region they want to collaborate with. Uh, so uh, it can somehow uh, create a, a bit looser borders uh, around the uh, broader geographical areas. I think also uh, more institution is healthier. Uh, that would be uh, another uh, option. Um, taking an account uh, all points of view, also as another pillar of uh, Wikipedia, is also somehow linked to the idea of uh, making diversity part of the process. Um, diversity, it's a, a strange word, but let's say uh, considering that you represent knowledge in, in, uh, in a place, not uh, only obviously the national knowledge, not, the, not so territorial. Um, this is something, maybe some, some of the uh, possible direction that uh, could be implemented. I think, uh, uh, well, imagining scenario is one of the most uh, interesting parts. And also conceiving collaborative, collaborative guidelines 
as a uh, I think is a, another interesting direction that Wikipedia is already implementing. Uh, I think the five pillars somehow could have also some uh, offline, uh, let's say, interpretation. Um, as I was a little bit mentioning with uh, uh, some of the possible action that can be done. Uh, I think though um, having also principles in how things uh, can be done is something that mm, I think uh, it's necessary. Um, and uh, uh, I think there is an, a naivete very often about culture, about uh, uh, as something that is positive, uh, which is uh, never been the case. Uh, if we, we'll, uh, in particular, the the use of culture, the model of the Cold War uh, uh, system, uh, kind of teaches a lot about how the use of culture. If we look at all the departments related to cultural policy, what have been developed in, particularly in the United States, in. Uh, in Russia is obviously uh, give a frame of uh, how culture is a, is a tool for uh, international relationship. Um, I think the, the advantage is that Wikipedia is not a nation, at least uh, <laughs> it, uh, even if it's a, have a comparable power somehow, and even if it's uh, uh, definitely growing, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to follow the same uh, dynamics. So uh, inventing also uh, possible uh, solutions or possible uh, direction can be at least an idea about uh, which is the vision that can obviously inform the uh, and, and I don't think uh, um, cooperation is, ne necess is, always ne um, is necessarily always uh, positive uh, in the way it's done in with the principle of uh, helping uh, the South. Also, uh, there have been a lot of studies also in particular uh, with uh, uh, co cooperation and development uh, uh, has been at the center, of course, uh, of uh, a lot of investigation on how you can create a, a frame of respect and reciprocity among our partners. And I think that can also be part of the, the direction. Yeah. Thank you. Whatever. Thank you so much. I'll put it in the pocket. Thank you. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be here, part of Wikipedia Academy Conference in Berlin. Okay, great. Um, so my name is Simona Petkova. I'm a PhD candidate within the Digital Methods Initiative in um, Amsterdam, University of Amsterdam, and um, my personal topic of research, okay, you saw quite a lot of it, is memory, memory as in data flows, memory as in narratives and practices, and in a way here, and the article that I would like to present to you today relates and feeds back to my research. Um, so I will be presenting today to you Richards and Emina uh, paper on tracing the entry of Srebrenica across Wikipedia's language versions. So I would like to hear your feedback um, at the end. But before we get there, um, let's start from the very, very beginning. So how do we study Wikipedia? There are several approaches and I will go through them during this presentation. And just um, to start with, so normally we study uh, Wikipedia as um, related to the quality of Wikipedia content, especially in relation to Encyclopedia Britannica. And another possible entry to study it is a publicity management tool. And this is more or less um, in relation to the Griffiths Wiki Scanner and its quest for scandals. Um, another way to approach Wikipedia is through its vigilant contributors and um, also considering Andrew Keane's um, critique that they are free laborers. And um, as you can see, we can also study it as a bureaucratic machine. And I think you will agree with me, especially if you have tried to make a new entry in the English version of Wikipedia as your first entry, there's lots of difficulties to do that. Um, on the other hand, what is not really well studied is this point, Wikipedia's relationship to Google. And um, 
we kind of start calling it a Google artifact because as we know Google obviously makes difference between the good and the bad linking farms and because Wikipedia constantly encourages us to link within the different entries obviously it's seen as the good linking farm. So uh, what I would like to do next is to zoom in a little bit further. So here we go, Wikipedia versus Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, in 2005, Nature came up with an article about peer review comparison between 42 entries on Wikipedia and Encyclopedia Britannica. They found only eight mistakes, serious errors, right? And four in each encyclopedias. And the ratio of the factual mistakes was 162 for Wikipedia and 123 in Britannica. And Richard really insisted on showing me this because this is the actual peer review. So take a look at it and we continue um, with another approach of studying Wikipedia. Just indicate when you would like me to move further. Okay? Okay, another possible way of seeing Wikipedia and studying it is through the wiki scanner or uh, as a tool to manage information, like in publicity managing as a PR tool. And uh, as you probably um, know, Griffith's wiki scanner de-anonymizes the edits by correlating the ones from the publicly available database dump to IP to location database and in this way it reveals the public management of information especially in the cases of sensitive issues and we in the Netherlands had our royal scandal this is what happened in 2007 when something else happened before that this is what happened so obviously uh, one of our princesses had an issues with her past and here she provided, according to this entry, an incomplete and false information about her past that was edited later only to incomplete. So, and false information was edited out. And using the wiki scanner, the journalists were able to actually localize the entry that has happened in the royal palace. So, this is how we manage information and create publicly desired profiles. However, what the journalists really didn't say is that um, later on this was reversed back to incomplete and false information. Another way of studying Wikipedia would be through its vigilant editors and you're, I guess, again, all familiar with this, John Udo's um, kind of lapse photography on the entry heavy metal umlaut movie. And especially he was quite amazed how some vandalism was detected and reverted sometimes minutes or seconds after that. Um, if we mine Wikipedia research, this is what we have. Normally, Wikipedia is seen as open source intelligence, wisdom of the crowds, collaborative knowledge, mass collaboration. Well, here on the bottom is the criticism. Andrew Keen is pretty um, famous for this, the free labor and the code of the amateur. Um, also, another point for consideration is that um, research has been undertaken in reaction to the findings that there is only a very tiny ratio of editors to users of social web. And um, Wikipedia co-founder also, Wales or founder, has often remarked that uh, the dedicated community is relatively small, around 500 members. Now here we come to the understudied part related to Google. Well, um, we still don't know much about the relationships between Wikipedia and Google, 
but still it's pretty prominent that the 95% of the Wikipedia articles, the English language Wikipedia articles, they appear in top 10 results in Google. So what does that mean? However, um, I would like to propose even another way of looking at Wikipedia. And uh, there has been quite substantial research um, done in um, Amsterdam at the uh, digital initiative, digital methods initiatives. And um, we propose to maybe consider and study Wikipedia as networked content. And we see it as held together dynamically by human authors and non-human tenders, including bots and alert software. So here you can see that quite big part of the Wikipedia's vigilance is maintained by robots or bots, software that often automatically monitors Wikipedia pages for changes and when a change is made to a page, a bot will come calling, examining the change, and perhaps it will add a link to another Wikipedia, one in a different language, or perhaps it will send an alert to a user telling the Wikipedian about a reversion or any other manner of activity. So, um, these changes to Wikipedia pages trigger bots visits and vigilance is often bot driven. So as you can he see here, and this is please August 2008, so we might very well have different statistics. Now um, you can see that the most popular bots, their activity and their overall number of edits and the edits in the past 30 days. During Summer School of 2008, Digital Methods Initiative Summer School 2008, we were interested in the reliance of Wikipedia on bots in order um, for the collectively authored user-generated encyclopedia to maintain itself. So the question was more or less, what is the degree of dependency of Wikipedia on bots? In order to answer this question, we looked into the amount of activity in Wikipedia by human users and by bots as well as by human users assisted by mo monitoring software. Remarkably, the most active Wikipedias are bots, as you can see in the previous slide, followed by human Wikipedians, of, uh, many of whom presumably use the Wikipedia monitoring tools and are alerted when changes are made to Wikipedia pages. So how many edits are made by humans and how many by bots? This is the visualization. So according to the Wikipedia bot activity data, and again, please bear in mind, this is August 2008, um, we actually found that the Wikipedia bot activity data was not really complete, it was incomplete. So according to that data set, it was 39% of all of the edits to all Wikipedias, also this includes the different language ones, are made by bots. However, the English language data was missing. So adding the English language data and its bots activity, we found that uh, the overall share between the human and the bots, this is 19%. Then we went a step further to explore the radical Okay, here you can see the ratio between human and the bots. Um, then we decided to go further and explore the radical idea of dependency of endangered languages on bots. So, um, not so much that endangered languages rely on bots for their survival, rather than the bots activity in, um, is remarkably high in endangered languages suggesting not only few human editors in those language spaces, but that the bots are creating links and integrating those languages into the larger Wikipedia undertaking. So here you can see endangered and revised languages.
what else has been done is that having noticed that a great difference between bot activity in English and the other language versions of Wikipedia, we became interested in the level of bot activity per language. There are currently 264 language versions of Wikipedia. The English one and the German one are the biggest. English is the biggest followed by the German. And bot activity varies greatly by language versions. So as you can see in the English is quite limited, but where this small language has 95%, has seen 97% of its, uh, percent of its edits made by bots. Another way that we propose to study Wikipedia is as a cultural reference. So in the article that was actually submitted to the Wikipedia Academy, Richard and Amina track a Wikipedia article through its different language versions to find and explore significant deviations from the English Wikipedia entry seen as the neutral point of view. So the Wikipedia entry is on Srebrenica, which refers to the killings of more than 8,000 Bosnian men and boys by the Army of the Republic of Serbia in the United Nations protected zone around Srebrenica in 1995. According to the International Criminal uh, Tribunal for Former Yugoslavia and the International Court of Justice, the killings in Srebrenica constitute a genocide. So this project traces the rework of Srebrenica through six language Wikipedias, Serbo-Croatian, and this is the official language of former Yugoslavia, Serbian, Bosnian, and Croatian. The national languages were introduced in corresponding countries after the Yugoslavian wars of 1991-1995. English, this is the international perspective, and the Dutch language Wikipedia entry since the United Protection Force station in this area was from the Netherlands. So uh, methodologically, it incorporates content analysis of the table of contents, um, outlinks analysis, and uh, contributors evaluation. So here are some of the findings. The findings from the content analysis signal a clear difference of the framing of the events across the language Wikipedias. The Bosnian and the Croatian entries frame the killings in Srebrenica as a genocide while the Serbian and the Serbo-Croatian version refers to it as a massacre. The English Wikipedia defines the events in Srebrenica also as a massacre, following the Wikipedia guidelines for controversial subjects that should be named on the basis of recognizability. While the Dutch article, and this is one of the most interesting findings, is on the top, uses a military term, the fall of Srebrenica. We found also um, quite a distinct reworks in the number of the victims as well. The English Wikipedia entry is the most exact, while the Bosnian and Croatian versions provide an estimate, while the Serbian and the Dutch article obviously play down the numbers. So the article concludes that given the distinctive reworkings of Srebrenica killings through language Wikipedia's different national points of view have been explicated. And various strategies have been incorporated to do so without surpassing the Wikipedia guidelines, creating a language version of an article, Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, for essentially the same language, which is the Serbo-Croatian, Following the Wikipedia rules of framing controversies in relation to recognizability, the choice of the English version power editor to define Srebrenica as a massacre, not genocide. Using many sources to validate the, re uh, um, to validate the rework and forking the article when its reliability is disputed in case of the Serbian entry. None of those mentioned strategies are applied when the article represents a community that shares the same national perspective. In the case of the Dutch entry of Srebrenica, contestation of the event has not been found. So this was a brief 
explanation of how Digital Methods Initiative University of Amsterdam proposed to study Wikipedia as a networked content and a cultural reference. Thank you. but they, Richard and Emina, they used the talk tool which just outputs all the different versions of the table of content for, time, for all the edits taken from the, the, the revision of the history of the, uh, the entrance. So we have a tool developed by Eric Bura that gets all the table of contents and then outputs it in a chronological way. And then this side has been the most often mentioned. No, then you see how the framing is, is done. Either is a massacre or a genocide. I think the question was whether the title might have changed over the days, if I get it because right. Because it says, yeah, yeah. the element says title and link and not yeah. framing. Yeah. That's my, but maybe you mean framing and then it's a misunderstanding. <laughs> So it could have been something like massacre at one day and then another day, like... Yes, but you can trace this back and you can see actually how the, the framing evolves over time. Right? So when they started, it could have been massacre and then turned into a genocide. Right? And then you can see the visual representation because it's done uh, according to a timeline. So you can see all of them connected in time. Yes, um, I'm really interested in the Google Wikipedia relationship that you were mentioning. And you mentioned the relationship and then you moved on to the role of bots. So I was wondering if there's actually a connection or a relation between the two. Because as far as I know, most of the bots activity or a large part of the bots activity is in the language linking activity. So bots can run on them themselves um, very much um, as in the language linkage bots with other um, um, bots quite a different story. So I was actually wondering if the bots activity has something to do with the good linking from Wikipedia as a good linking. Yeah. yeah, it contributes definitely because they keep making new links, right? If your article is an orphan, you're encouraged to start embedding links um, to the other wikis that appear as keywords in your entry. So yes, it, it has it has a clear um, relationship to the bots activity because most of the time the bots make the links, the interwiki links. So the question would be yes, but still this is a very fascinating topic that we have been thinking to approach as well. But still, uh, so far we kind of framed Wikipedia as a Google artifact because it's a good linking firm. It's quite interesting. Well, sometimes it's quite also difficult from a researcher perspective to know whether your sample is clean or not, sure. because then you have Wikipedia reappearing all over your results. Huh? So that's also a big challenge for us as well. Uh, maybe in addition to this question, um, it's not only interwiki activity done by bots, which um, adds to the links, but there are also uh, meta sites in Wikipedia which are maintained mainly by bots. And I think these links add to the Google um, results too. And I think um, starting bots is a very interesting um, approach to Wikipedia. Um, not only bots, but also infrastructure, because it's also tools and scripts and many, many more. And um, I think it, it will be a key um, to mapping Wikipedia or understanding it better than only um, the collaboration of crowds or whatever. And on the second article, um, it was very interesting to me because I come from, from in the German community. This was one of um, the yeah most controversial articles to um, a certain point when an editor showed up and he was 
kind of, yeah, we, we call them premium authors. And uh, he was very experienced. He had written um, some articles which were regarded as very good. And he somehow took over the article and took a, a huge list of references um, of books that were regarded um, as, as good, as valid, and he completely rewrote this article. And since then, it hasn't changed very much. And I think this is one strategy um, which is often overlooked because um, there um, are people who become experts for, for a certain topic and um, they are not experts because of um, only because they're in real life experts, like he was an historian, he wasn't, um, but um, he had access to books which others hadn't, and um, he could cite these books as a reference, as um, some kind of witness for his um, version. And um, I think this is um, a major point when um, you look at the history of articles and uh, the stability of articles. Yes, uh, exactly. We uh, are going to try to study this next week at uh, our summer school. We're very interested to see how the language of the references start informing actually the content, right? The clear distinction of what you uh, have just mentioned. Yes, uh, well, uh, the, the Serbian article uh, has a, a, a very explicit power editor as well there. And it's a very neutral point of view according to uh, the, the protocols of uh, Wikipedia while the content is totally different. Uh, however, if um, you allow me to go back to your previous question for the previous presentation, we were studying, um, we're still studying and mining populism across Europe and beyond. And we have seen that actually our structures are enabled by the state that we are all in. And um, the very preliminary results so far show that nation, state, family, these are the biggest issues for uh, Europe and a little bit the eastern part as well, which kind of came uh, quite uh, surprising because we haven't seen immigrants, right, immigration policies, Muslims, you know, things that we have expected to see coming from the press. But nevertheless, it's interesting to relate Wikipedia as its claim for the neutral point of view and creating such an administration around it to have a very clear national point of view enabled through the, the wiki's language pages. Um, let me finish with uh, an own question really quickly. Um, I was wondering whether um, you took a look into the talk page and whether you um, found something like a reference to that, that shows that um, the pages of the other countries have been recognized. I mean, is there like, um, do you find signs about um, they're talking, hey, the, the number of um, victims is a lot different in that, um, in that Wikipedia or something? I, I think Emina, Emina went and looked also through the, because this is where you start uh, just suggesting and speculating uh, uh, to start with a con controversial issue. Mm -hmm. So I think she also did some work and she went to the talking page and see whether there was a discussion around framing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thank you. Thank um, you. So let's move to the last talk. Um, Oi. I need to uh, enable you. He should go to the right, um, I think, because you can. This one? Yeah. Here? Yes. I can put it on here, right? Yeah. So this is all. Can I just put that in here? Great. <laughs> Das ist an? Ja, ja, das ist alles gut. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for 
putting together such a terrific conference. So I don't know if Nicole is here, who is representing Wikimedia, but I know that we have Leonard here from uh, Free University Berlin, and we have Christian here from um, the Internet Institute, um, which was recently opened um, last year. So thanks a lot for, for this conference here. Um, all right, my topic today is geolinguistic bursts. I spare you the, the subtitle again. Um, so I just move on to what, I would like, what I'd actually like to talk about, which is, this is a conceptual experiment, I have to say, right? Um, and hopefully it's going to evolve into a framework that might be useful to practice, which means Wikipedia, Wikipedia and researchers as well. All right, so what, what are bursts? Um, burst is a concept that was developed um, to describe phenomenon, phenomena in nature. So it features very prominently in the natural sciences. For example, in physics, we find gamma ray bursts. Um, these are sudden intense flashes of gamma rays, which for a few milliseconds light up in an otherwise, in otherwise fairly dark gamma ray, gamma ray sky. Physicist and network scientist Albert Lashle Barabashi from Northeastern University in Boston um, recently proposed that the concept of bursts can be used also to describe and predict human activity and behavior. So what he was saying was basically, bursts are an integral part of life, signatures of the continuous struggle for adaptation and survival. So evolution proceeds in bursts, that's what he was saying. Um, and despite the seeming randomness of human behavior he was going on, humans actually act in a very predictable, predictable pattern. And that is long periods of rest, followed by short periods of intense activity. And because evolution proceeds in bursts, and bursts are the human pattern, as he suggests, um, bursts are also everywhere defined. He mentions from the trade, trades made by currency brokers to the sleeping patterns of humans and animals to the edits of individuals in Wikipedia. This latter point and his additional assumption that knowledge seems to evolve also in a bursty fashion sparked my initial interest in the concept of bursts and how it may contribute to the evolution and further development of Wikipedia. So if we actually buy into the theory of bursts, and especially that knowledge evolves in bursts, um, then it may be argued that the Wikipedia has experienced a first period of burstiness up until now. So first, the intense activity that brought, brought about the success of Wikipedia, and more recently the consolidation within Wikipedia, for example in terms of contributors, um, that signals a period of rest, of lower intensity. And I believe we should consider or even embrace, the, embrace this time of rest as a normal condition, which of course we don't. Because, because we often consider it only from the perspective what a philosophy of growth or success. This brings me actually to the point that Benjamin Hill was making in his, in his keynote when he points out that the Wikipedia community has systematically failed to replicate their greatest success points he points, or he suggests, uh, to focus on failures, which is a very, very good point, uh, because it turns away our intention from the philosophy of growth. Another way um, to think about the replication of success points um, is to use the concept of bursts, which considers the co-evolution of growth, AK success, and slowdown activity, AK failures. And today I will use a specific subsection to explain this a little more. So this sub subsection is geolinguistic bursts. Geolinguistic bursts emphasize location and language-based dynamics of change in Wikipedia. And geolinguistic bursts are found across the Wikipedia ecosystem. So that is the micro, the meso, and the macro level. Geolinguistic bursts, like bursts in general, are both changing in themselves and causing change in the system. Let me explain this for a second. So here's one conceptual way of visualizing this for practice and research. The grid, I must say, is to be understood and imagined as extremely large. You can see I just mentioned a few chapters up there. 
and I, I come to items a little later. Um, so it's extremely large and it's also dynamic. But here this is just a, really a, a section and a snapshot in time. The vertical column is items and the horizontal one is chapters. But really alternative column titles are possible. The black and red ones here, the black and red dots of fields um, here are the intense activity of bursts. So bursts that were popping up at a particular mo moment of time and they will disappear um, uh, fairly quickly again. The grey and red are anticipated bursts and what I mean by this is um, that they can actually develop in two ways, either by scenario building, which means to use existing data, existing Wikipedia data and use predictive methods, or on the other hand um, it can be used for strategy and policy planning, which basically means um, to develop desired outcomes and goals. So what are the desired outcomes and goals in, say, item here, to which I will come in a, in, in a second, um, related to the Hindi, and Vic, Hindi Wikipedia over there. And then there are also the empty fields, which indicate low, uh, low uh, activity or no activity. And this is a very important part of bursts. So what, we've, what we can find here in this grid is a constant rotation between emptiness, anticipation and actualization. Such a way of visualizing how bursts change in themselves, thereby causing changes in the system, I propose can be a useful tool for strategy development, short and long term planning and so on and so forth. So let's look at some items here and some, some examples. The first example that I used um, is about language enthusiasm. This is more on the individual level and this is a study I have done which um, looked into non-native speakers contributing to specific Wikipedia chapters. So non-native speaking, non-native speakers who just learned the language and or happened to live in the locality where the language was used um, tried to contribute or did actually contribute to a Wikipedia chapter. The particular example I'm referring here to is um, the Sorbian Wikipedia. Sorbian Wikipedia, uh, the Sorbian language, uh, um, sorry, the Sorbian language is a language that is spoken in Eastern Germany, in a part of Eastern Germany, in the state of Saxony, by around 15,000 to 30,000 people. And what I did there was, I was interviewing um, Wikipedians who were contributing to it. And um, I found quite often that they were Sor Sorbian speakers and non-Sorbian speakers. So here's um, the argument that I heard quite often um, in, a, in, a, in a similar way, uh, done by, by a Wikipedian for the Upper Sorbian Wikipedia. Many of those who actually wrote for it, for the Upper Sorbian Wikipedia, were not Sorbs. Most of the 5,000 articles have been the work of two, three enthusiasts who were not Sorbs. So what I'm doing here is, um, um, and what I think is, and this is just a section from the wiki stats, uh, wiki, st wiki statistics um, of the um, Upper Sorbian Wikipedia, and it's the article development. Um, and I think this quite nicely reflects this, this kind of bursty period. Um, so at the beginning you have a long period um, where the chapter was, was found, but nothing was really happening. And then out of a sudden, um, you, you see, well, literally bursting, um, well, literally bursting onto the Wikipedia scene, um, 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 another chapter, which is the Upper Sorbian Wikipedia. And this is mainly because of local language enthusiasts. After that, we see a long-term slowdown in activity. Um, and one reason for that is um, that there were not enough native Sorbians who actually picked up on the contribution by language enthusiasts because um, the Sorbian language changed in Wikipedia. Um, it was different to how it, used, to how it is used among uh, native Sorbians because it was written by language enthusiasts, which means non-native speakers. So this is kind of a typical bursty uh, pattern. Long periods of rest followed by short periods of intense activity. A second example. The second example actually relates to the Google Wikipedia relationship. Um, it's, well, it's something, um, it's just for, 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 for the sake of, of naming it. I named the item localization, but really it's about translation as part of localization. So um, what it means, it's, um, um, it's, it's, it's an item on the meso level that, that means it's, 
it's something that goes on between institutions, Google and Wikipedia. And, and as, as I guess a lot of you are aware of, um, in 2008, Google and Wikipedia worked together, or started to work together. Google provided its translation software to help a team of volunteers, translators, and Wikipedia, Wikipedians across India, the Middle East, and Africa to translate several million words for Wikipedia into languages such as Arabic, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, um, and so on and so forth. So at the end, more than 16 million words were translated from English into local languages. What I've chosen here is um, the South Indian language, Kannada. And what we see here is just the active Wikipedians. Because, well, obviously, the article count increases once you, you know, feed the Wikipedias with a lot of translated works. So I was, I was actually um, um, looking at some, some other statistics here. Um, and what we see here is the active Wikipedians in that local chapter. Um, so again, um, this started in 2008, which must be here. Um, but really, um, the peak was then in 2010 when, when the, can the Canada, or ca can Canadian chapter um, um, was concerned most by those, um, by those translations. Um, and after that, we see a slowdown in, in, in activity again. The slowdown in activity, and this is also an, an, an interesting point, um, could be described by something that I, that I would call localiz localization not done well. Um, because what happens was that Wikipedians, especially in the Indian languages, um, were complaining that they felt left alone with useless translations because Google used their, their translation machines. And, and so um, there was those local chapters which were fed with a lot of articles well, were useless or were, say, were less used by native speakers. So it was against the goals that were set out um, at the beginning. So again, um, this is kind of a, um, also um, a, a, bursty, a bursty period or, or a bursty pattern which we probably see better if we, if we, we zoom out a, a lot more than, than, than this is the case here. The third case is interlanguage linkage, which we've heard also about um, today. Um, this is an item on the macro level, I would argue, um, because it pertains to Wikipedia as a socio-technical system. This is against the, again the Amsterdam School who is arguing that. Um, so the example here is something that a lot of research has developed um, over, the, over the years, um, and that is interlanguage links by humans and non-humans. Um, so we could look at many examples um, that emphasize those kind of, of bursts, and, and in particular how um, intense interlanguage interlink linking activity is sparked. So, for example, some of those sparks might be a new bot, a better algorithm, a policy change, or people actually solving issues um, related to bots not recognizing human inputs. Um, so all this can result, if you look, if you look at this at, in, 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 long, in the long term, um, in bursty patterns of interlanguage linking activity. That is how intensively spe specific Wikipedia chapters are contributed to. This is just um, a particular moment in time. Um, 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 and at and, and that point of time, the activity looked like this for a specific chapter. This is the Chinese chapter, and you see the kind of contributions that they go here, and, how, and also the outlinks here. So this is all interlanguage linkage at that particular moment of time, which was in 2010. Um, but if we, again, looked at it from a long-term perspective and tried to figure out what activities had what impact, we... I'm pretty sure we can see some bursty pattern em emerge as well. All right, so these three um, socio-technical examples um, form part of the hypothesis that geolinguistic bursts are the hidden pattern behind Wikipedia's globally distributed yet locally specific knowledge. Long periods of rest are followed by short intensive periods that are sparked within different items. I've mentioned language enthusiasm, localization, interlanguage linkage, but these are really just three of those items. So to conclude, um, I propose this conceptual grid, which is based on the phenomenon of bursts, to figure out and discuss more the reasons for both intense activity and slowdown activity in Wikipedia chapters and the encyclopedia as a whole. 
what it, what it will enable us to then think about is first how to replicate the success points, that is to consider and find solutions for the socio-technical and socio-cultural specifics and complexities in play. Secondly, how to trigger intense bursty periods or bursty activity. Thirdly, how to prolong intense periods of activity that are part of bursts. And fourth, to regard emptiness, slow down activity as an opportunity that is in the making. Thank you. Go and contribute to change very good, very good, very interesting point, yes. So the relation of Wikipedia and news. Good, very good. Thank you. Leonard, yes. Um, I, uh, very interesting uh, data. Uh, one, one question about me, and maybe this is something, maybe you can, can put this a little bit more, for, uh, bring this a little bit more forward. Um, make it more theoretical in a way, because as it stands, and as I, if I'm correct, if I didn't understand it correctly, is that you observe these bursts in the data, so in a way that's an artifact. And then you look into the reason for the burst, and in the examples at least that you presented, you found three rather different explanations for the burst. Mm -hmm. um, so different uh, mechanisms, different uh, hypotheses, why, why such a burst occurred. Mm -hmm. And, and you said there may be much more, so you just uh, took three of those. Um, wouldn't it be helpful, but also necessary, to go one step further and try to identify maybe a dozen of bursts, look at them in a qualitative manner, but then try to generalize? Even so, you that you're not because now you're you're finding the artifact in the data, and then you say. There must be a reason, and look for it, and then you tell the story. That's interesting, <laughs> but sure. I think uh, even to, to, to do what you suggest in the end, you would have to be able to get one, uh, one step further and really try to search for more generalizable patterns. So is this what you have? Right. No, no, that's a, that, that's a good point, and I actually like that you that you that you want to push me further into the direction because, as I said, it was just a conceptual experiment. I was trying it out, but this encourages me now to do well to go one step further and and. And I don't know what you actually have in mind, but I would, but I would say, I mean, if we could come up with recommendations, for example, um, would that something... If you can come up, with, uh, come up with recommendations, you should have a theory. That oh, right, okay. Or okay, so... A set of sure, that are sure. More general that, so, okay, language enthusiasts, because that's a very specific phenomenon. Sure, sure. So you're saying try to develop a theory and then on that, on top of that, and that recommendations. Very good, thanks. Uh, I'd like to add to that because that's something I kind of had in mind um, as well and I think I would go even a step further because um, I really like the concept um, that um, some of your data, of course you did not present all of it, but uh, did not convince me because if you have the concept of first of being really a short period of intense activity, I was wondering how the data from the Canadian Wikipedia where you have like over the months or whatever, some kind of piece or nothing. I'm not sure whether yeah. it but wouldn't help to first, on sure. the one hand, to more put it more concretely, what exactly are words, and then on the other hand, I would go even further and not only generalize, but predict it and then find it. Yep. Because I think it's always easy to go into the data and search for something, and whenever you search, you will find something. Yep. But it's much more powerful if you have something like a, theor uh, like a theory and you predict, okay, if there's something going on there, something like this, and this should produce a burst there but not there or whatever. Yes, yes. Great, yes. Well, well, yeah, well, thanks for that comment. Um, I, 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 don't know if you, I don't know if you meant it, but I made the same mistake before as well. I thought that bursts are just the intense activity periods, which is not the case. It's also the slowdown activity. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you, yes, and, and thanks for your comments. And I'll, well, I'll try to develop it further and yeah. um, taking in, into account your, your comments. Uh, thanks I'm a lot. I'm sure you have a lot more data and you just presented a little of it, but um, there was something that was going to happen. Okay. Cool. Further comments? Questions? 
Um, Tomas, it's, yeah, it's great. It's a really uh, fantastic concept. Cheers. Possibly just working on the, the last few uh, comments as well. Um, have you worked outside of Wikipedia? Have you, have you sort of thought about this, um, developing this framework that could be useful in, in other areas of online participation? I haven't actually. No, I haven't. I, I, got, I just got interested in, in, in the Wikipedia aspects or in, in Wikipedia and how, how the concept of bursts fits in there, but I guess we should yeah. talk a little more about this after the session. Yeah, yeah. cool. Further questions? Well, it's hard, but um, thank you very much, uh, all the speakers, uh, thank you to the audience for your attention and your great comments and questions. I wish you a nice evening and a relaxing one. We so have a thanks. panel still. Huh? We have a panel still. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, I wish you could ask all an interesting panel. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that. Thank you for the chat.